It's the end of February and I've come to the Rococo Gardens, which uh, is just outside Painswick, so not very far from me at all, uh, ostensibly to get some pictures of snowdrops, but I don't know if I'm going to get any, mostly because in the time that it's taken me to actually get here, uh, we've had a couple of storms. Now the day today isn't as, as nice as it could have been. There's a bit of light coming through the clouds and I'm hoping that some of that light is going to shine on some of the snowdrops that haven't been damaged and I'm going to be able to, uh, to get something. Um, but it's also... I've also sort of my thoughts have turned to uh, what do I want to achieve this year? What am I going to do uh, in terms of photography? And there are several things that I could uh, uh, perhaps look at. You know, I've quite enjoyed doing landscapes. I've really enjoyed doing wildlife photography and I might want to do a little bit more of that. I'd also like to try some portraiture as well. But sitting out here, uh, thinking about doing flowers and things, I'd never really considered doing that before as a, as a kind of a, a long-term thing. And perhaps, that's where I'm going to end up. I may very well be out of luck today because I've just been around uh, the area and in terms of snowdrops there's very little left. Um, I might have got a couple of, of, of shots of a couple of bunches but um, a few weeks ago this place would have been carpeted in snowdrops and you can still see the remnants of that in some of the b-roll that I've taken but it's nowhere near uh, what I was hoping for and I expect that in part some of the storms that we've had uh, over the past couple of weeks have been the reason for that and in fact the storms over the past couple of weeks are the reason that I didn't come here any earlier. I did want to tell you about the camera that I'm using today. Well, actually, it's the same camera that I normally use, but I've got a slightly different lens on. Uh, I've got a, a Sigma 105 on, uh, which is a, uh, a 2.8 uh, lens, and it's a macro lens as well. And so today I wanted to challenge myself to do nothing but use this particular uh, 105 lens and to see what it was like. It's not my lens, it's my father's, but my dad uses a D500, I'm using a D7500, so you've got the same sensor in there, you've got the same uh, processor in there, and we've done a few tests between the two, and the image quality is pretty much the same. So in theory, I should get some pretty damn good shots out of it if I can find some flowers that I can take. The other thing, of course, is that it's bloody freezing. Uh, February has never been the warmest of months, uh, as I slip my hands into my pocket to, uh, to uh, try and alleviate some of the breeze. We've got this cold wind today, and when the wind isn't blowing, it's all right. When it is, it's an absolute nightmare. It's really, really cold. Uh, so this might be a shorter video than usual, because to be honest, I really want to get back to the car where it's warm. The thing about photography, is, especially when you come to somewhere like this, if I was coming out here for fun, for a day out, uh, and it was weather like this, I'd bring some gloves, because the rest of me is quite warm, uh, but my hands are absolutely freezing, of course, because you're handling equipment, because you're touching, <laughs> you're touching, uh, in some cases, metal equipment as well, which is quite cold. You do get very cold hands doing this job, uh, which I wouldn't recommend to anybody. Now, I found a bunch of uh, sort of snowdrops, and they I think they're probably the best ones in the whole place. Uh, however, I'm having a little bit of a problem because I can't quite get the angles that I want. If uh, the ground was a little bit drier, I would sit on the ground and I would take it from sort of different angles. But as it is, I've got to be down, I've got to be looking down at them. And I don't think that necessarily means that you get the best look for the snowdrops. Now, in terms of settings, I had f7.5 on the lens and I'm at uh, an ISO of uh, 200 with a shutter speed of 100. Now, because... Uh, that might be a little bit too much. Because the um, lens itself is a 105 and because it's got stabilisation on that means I've got a few stops to play around with. So setting it at 100 should mean that I still got actually quite sharp images. In fact, uh, I have got some quite sharp images from it taking a look at the back of the camera. The other problem is that because of the position of the snowdrops and because of where I kind of have to stand in order to get a bit good picture of them, I'm actually in my own light uh, and I'm having to be a bit careful about where I'm standing to do that. And I have to say, bending over to take these images is taking a little bit of a toll. Um, 
I'm going to try another couple of shots. Uh, same sort of thing, uh, but I really want to see how this lens performs uh, kind of at a, at a, with a better close-up. And there's nowhere around here that I can really try it out. Anyway, I'll give this a go and I'll flash up the results on the screen right now. I don't know about you, but I actually quite like both of these photos. But you can see the problem that I was having. With a fixed focal length, the only way to get closer or more dramatic shots was to get closer to the subject, and that was starting to take its toll on my poor back. So taking a look at the uh, pictures from the back of the camera, I can't really see anything um, too well, but from what I've seen from previous photos that I've taken with my uh, sort of standard 18 to 300 uh, mil Nikon lens, this is doing a really, really good job. And this looks a lot more professional than, than some of the stuff that I've taken in the past. That's gotta be down to the, the, the lens because it's not the camera, it's not the settings that I'm using. It is purely the lens and this thing, it's a bit of a beast actually. It's not too heavy, but you are sort of fixed into the uh, into focus, obviously. And that's where I'm getting the problems with distance. With my 300 mil lens, I could just zoom in and I wouldn't have a problem. But at the same time, I wouldn't have as, as sharp an image. There's a, a bit of a softness to the focus. It's still in focus, don't get me wrong, but uh, this is, it's it's so much better. It's so much spot on. And this of course is why people tell you, you you've got to, you know, you use prime lenses because they do a much much better job for you. I decided to take my life into my hands and I'm now sitting on the floor so I have quite a cold posterior uh, and my hands are still freezing. This uh, is not boding well for the future however I've got a couple of better shots of, um, of, of, of these wonderful little, little plants um, and the whole point of coming here today was to get these shots. Now it has got an awfully awful lot darker here as the sun's kind of gone behind clouds so I'm going to have to increase the shutter speed here uh, as well as uh, what have I got it on? I put it on 250 speed because the flowers are moving around a little bit. I don't really want to get that in shot. Let's uh, take this one now and see what, what, what I'm doing. I'm going to try and get a lot closer to the flower as well which means this camera is going to decide it doesn't like me anymore but uh, we'll live with that. I'll probably do a cut here. And just unfortunately that focus was just soft uh, and it, it means um, I'm going to have to put this right the way up and it means I'm going to have to put the ISO right the way up to compensate as well. Um, I don't like going this high really with ISO but I'm at a thousand, um, uh, I want to say frames a second, that's not right, uh, one, one thousandth of a second uh, with an ISO of uh, 3200 and an F stop of 4.2. I think even then it's going to be too uh, too high. We will see. I tell you what, I can put it manual. I can do the manual thing. I can take the F down to uh, 4.2 and then that means I can drop the ISO because I would rather drop the ISO than dropping the shutter speed. Uh, I'm, I'm on about 640 now. That's a lot better. Let's see what this does. That's a lot better. Framing was a bit off, but actually that's an awful lot better. Um, and what I'm noticing here though with this particular lens is that you've got all, you've also got a, a cost cut an f4.5. I've got a relatively shallow depth of field as well, uh, and that does make a bit of a difference too. Uh, however, uh, I think what I'm going to have to do now, I've taken this from various different angles. What I'm going to have to do now is uh, go back and uh, see what I can get out of the pictures from Lightroom. Here they are, and I have to apologise for some of the dithering that appears on some of the shots. It's only there in the videos, not the original images. I'm not entirely sure why it's happening. But this was a much better collection of shots. You can see here how well the lens performs at close quarters. I was really pretty shocked with the sharpness and quality of the image, actually, and I'd really love to know what you think in the comments. So I had to come out of that because it was just so cold. I mean, my hands are balls of ice. They're, they're so, so cold. Um, and nice to get back into the car where it's warm. And just as I got here, the sun came out. So that's... Uh, that's great, uh, but I do think I've got 
some pretty good shots there. Um, obviously, I'll have to see when I go back into Lightroom what, what they're actually going to look like. But I didn't want to finish this video until I had a chance to talk about the lens that I was using and what I actually thought about it. This is my first time using a prime lens, and I thought it would be more difficult than it was. Clearly, I had a few problems bending down towards the subject in order to take the pictures that I wanted to get, which is why I ended up on the floor. But that's a very situational thing, and I think you could set this up so that, uh, you, know, you know, if you're not taking stuff that's on the floor, I think you'd, you'd actually have something which is a, a really nice lens. You know what, I think this would be good for portraiture as well. Because that 105 focal length is something that I've seen people who do portraiture, I've seen them use that. And especially when you've got a, a, a really uh, low aperture as well at the same time, um, I think you could get a really, really nice picture with that. And at some point I'm going to have to try it. And like I said earlier, I'd like to try some portraiture. Actually, it's one of the things that I'm not entirely sure about is where I'll end up going with photography this year. Last year I had my pictures displayed in a couple of international galleries. Uh, I think the same is going to happen this year. I'm basically entering competitions where there's a high chance of me being displayed in a gallery, um, partly so that you can put that on your website and you can say, hey, that's great, I've done this thing. Um, partly just for the challenge of doing it, you know. I don't think that you get better with photography unless you set yourself little challenges, little goals and things. And one of the goals that I wanted to set this year is to actually sell my photos. Well, I don't know how to do that. I don't know where to find an audience. I don't know where to find um, uh, you know, get the printing right or everything like that. I've set myself up a website already because I used to be a web designer, so I know how to do that pretty fairly well. Uh, so I've got that at stevemeller.com is a, a legitimate thing now. It's, it exists. It has my pictures on there. The pictures that I am most proud of, you can see things like the, uh, the lions that I had in the West Midlands Safari Park. Those are on there. Uh, the Usk trip, the Usk reservoir shot is, is on there as well. So there's a couple of things that actually you'll have seen if you watch all of the videos. But beyond that, finding an audience and actually starting to sell these things, I, I'm not entirely sure how to do. That's the thing that I've got to figure out. Um, now, currently, I work in marketing, so I've got a little bit of a start in in there. Uh, but we'll we'll see how things go over the course of the year. And uh, obviously, as I'm doing that, I'm going to be making videos about what I'm doing as well, which leads me to a few things I wanted to talk about about the channel. So far, uh, I have to figure out what sort of content that I want to make. And I've mentioned portraits. I've mentioned maybe doing something a little bit different with portraits. So it's not just the standard pretty girl in a, in a shot somewhere. I'd, I'd like to do something uh, that's a little bit more artistic than that. I hope that you can see uh, where I'm coming from artistically with some of the, the shots that I produce. Uh, maybe not. I don't know. Uh, maybe I haven't conveyed that enough. Maybe if you go to stevemeller.com, you'll see more of where I'm sort of coming from from a, from a, 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 a photography perspective. Uh, but I do like the art of photography and that's really where I want to stay. So there's other things like, um, I, I keep wanting to call it command strips because it's CMD, uh, con continue, con deliberately blurring your movement because of a art thing. I can't remember what it's called. Uh, it, it's just escaped my brain because I'm so cold. Uh, but that would be a nice thing to try. Um, uh, I, I've seen a couple of shots that are done with it and, and they look really good. They look really artistic. I like the idea of blending images together. So I'm going to try some of that this year if I can. Uh, so there's a lot of things in photography that I haven't done that I want to do. But at the same time, I realize that I am making videos uh, that have to be relevant for the people who I want to watch them. And that's you. If you're watching this video, you're one of those people. And what I'd really, really love to know is what would you like to see? from a photography videos, whether it's uh, more editing stuff, whether it's more just talk about the general art of photography or the business of photography. I quite like the idea about doing a whole series about how to businessify your art form, because that's what I'm doing right now. And, and I think, you know, I might have some interesting uh, uh, ideas to bring to that. I, I, I don't know. Would that be something that you'd like to see? If it would, leave a comment below. If there's something else that you think, actually, what I'm really missing right now is X, Y or Z, leave a comment below uh, for that as well. 
Um, do you enjoy, perhaps, me talking about different lenses or different cameras or uh, different photo trips or whatever it is you know that's the stuff that i need to know in order to make this a better channel for you the person watching it right now and on that note on to the lens that i've been using um which i've obviously talked about a little bit before uh i really can't tell what my final views are on this lens until i get back into uh into lightroom till i've had a look at the photos until i've seen the the sort of the overall quality of the thing uh, right now, from what I've seen in the back of the viewfinder, and that's that's really only sort of tiny images, let's face it. From what I've seen in that viewfinder, I am incredibly impressed with this particular lens. Of course, that might all change when I get it back in and find that I've missed the focus on 90% of my shots. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. Um, although it does look like I've come out of uh, the, the Rococo Gardens, uh, which is a lovely place in Painswick in Gloucester. And if you do get a chance to visit it, do go and visit it because it's great. But it's just started to hail. So um, that's how cold it's been today. I've been fighting off enough cold to make hailstones, so, so there's that. Uh, right now, I think uh, the best thing to do is take a look at the best shot that I got from today's photo trip. This, for me, shows what you can really get out of that lens, and I'm ever so pleased with it, even though I waited around for quite a while to get that right break in the clouds. I've said this before, a lot of photography is just waiting. Now, it did take a bit of hunting around to be able to get a shot quite like that, but I was so pleased with this shot that I've already printed it, and I'm thinking of making it available as a print on my website. I'd love to know your thoughts. And that's it for this particular photo trip. If you've liked today's video, please leave a like and share it with your friends. If you haven't done it yet, hit the subscribe button as well, and the little bell icon. I'll see you next week when I will show you exactly what I did in Lightroom to get the image that you're seeing right now. Until then, thanks very much for watching.